Okay, hey everybody, just making sure things are recording here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the test, and I encourage you not to just copy, but um, understand what it is that I'm uh, talking about. It'll help you get a better score if you're going to retest, and it'll help you a whole lot in uh, Module 8, which is why I am taking the extra time to do this for everybody. So, uh, number one, to know these two triangles are congruent, Name two different pairs of additional corresponding parts that would confirm each triangle congruence if you know the parts were congruent. Then state which triangle congruence conjecture was met by using each of the two options. Okay, so here we're being asked to name two different pairs of corresponding parts. So on the test, some people wrote right here, angle C equals angle R. And then for the other one, they wrote angle A equals angle P. I already know that. It's marked. So we have to name two other things that would let us use the triangle congruence conjectures, which are the ASA, the angle angle side, the side angle side, Let's see here, the side, 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 and the HL. So the way it's marked right now is just AA, angle, angle, which is not one of them. So I could go through and say that B is Q, which some people did as well, but AAA is not one of them. So I'm going to have to prove a side. So once I start to look at this, I'm going to say, okay, if I knew that these two sides were equal, which would be side AC, and I knew that ha that had to equal, oh, what would that line up with? AC and, so I want to do it correctly, PR. So if I go ahead and do that, now I have two angles and a side. So we have to see if it's this one or if it's this one. Since the side falls in between the two angles, this one is angle, side, and angle. Okay, next, um, we gotta do another one. So, not this one, but something else. A couple people also tried to use the HL on this one, the hypotenuse leg. That's impossible because these are not right triangles. So remember, like with the Pythagorean theorem, it has to be a right triangle. Same with the HL. So this one is actually out for this problem. So another thing that we can do would be, we could say that this side is equal to this side. So that would be CB is equal or congruent to, I'm not picky if you put the little thing on top, either way is fine. Uh, CB is equal to RQ, and that gives me two angles and a side again, but it's not the side that falls in between the two angles. So that is angle, angle, side. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go on to problem number two. If you're confused at all about one, stop the video and ask me, okay? I want everybody to be able to get a, a seven or even an eight on the next time we take this test. Okay, two. Uh, Cassidy and Luke are standing on a giant coordinate plane. Cassidy is at negative 7, 12, and Luke is at 5, negative 4. How far apart are they? We did okay here since it was on the last test, and in chapter 8, the whole first lesson, 8.1, was about finding the distance between two points. So a few of us found the slope of this line, but that wouldn't make sense. Because um, if you think about how far it is from here to here, it's going to be a distance, all right? And also a number like a thousand or something like that isn't gonna make sense either. Because if you picture how far apart these two are, it's probably gonna be like, I don't know, 10 to 20. So what we wanna do is basically, if you were to put, if you were to graph these, so negative 7, 12, you don't have to graph them, but if you were to graph them, negative 7, 12 would be like negative 7, 12, and five, negative four would be like five, negative four. It's gonna be, the distance of that line. So graph it if it makes you feel better. You could even use graph paper. But basically, we need to make this into a right triangle. And we need to figure out how much this changed. So up and down is our y value. So if we change from 12 
down to negative 4, that's down 16. And if we go from negative 7 to positive 5, that's over 12. So we now put it in the Pythagorean theorem. 16 squared plus 12 squared is c squared. And I th think this is, I hope it is, 256 plus 144 is c squared. And then when you add those two together, we get 400 is c squared. And we take the square root of both sides. The answer is the square root of 400. Now our last test said leave it as um, leave it as a radical. That just means underneath the square root sign, boom, you're done. This straight up says how far apart are they? So you actually have to do the square root of 400, and they are 20 apart. Okay, let me see how I'm doing on time here. I probably got time to do one more problem before I have to switch videos. Okay, um, using only a compass and a blank straight edge, construct a regular octagon inscribed in a circle and show all your compass marks. I'm going to be honest, we did wonderful uh, with this problem on the test. There are, of course, a handful of people that missed it. Maybe they were gone when we went over it in class. But I think that um, I'm still going to make you do it today. But I think that there's probably at least one person at every table group that knows how to do it. So if you know how to do this, start in on it. Um, if you don't know how to do it, ask me if I'm free or ask someone at your table group so you know how to do this for the next test. But since most of us got it correct, um, I'm not going to take the time to get out the compass and the straight edge and do this one. Again, if, if no one's available, I think they should be, but if they're not, all you have to do is Google on your Chromebook um, regular octagon inscribed in a circle. And there is like a three or four minute video that will just um, straight up tell you how to do it. Okay, so this is page one. Um, I'm going to stop the video now because it's gone like seven minutes and I will start part two.